I started making $18 an hour when I was 18 years old. I was making more than my mother. My first job was as a dishwasher when I was 15 years old. I, I cleaned the floors and I washed the dishes, but it, it, it never made me feel in any way demigrated. I never, I, I always felt that it, it, it wasn't the work that I was doing is about the man that I would be. Yes. And that empowered me. I was a bread earner in my family, and my mom told me this helps, and it's, and it, it, it's contributing. And my five siblings now see what I am and what I'm doing, and I live by my integrity and my character, and that's what they resonate, and I love them to death, and they know that. And I'm there for them when they graduate, when they should bring home, when my five, four-year-old brother comes home and says, the teacher said I was, I was her special helper today. And she brings up his, he brings up his certificate and shows it to me and the smile on his face. And I say, great job. That stuff means something to them. It starts when they're young. It starts when they're young. I never got that, so I made sure I wanted to be there for my siblings. My mother never went to that ed educational system, so she didn't know what it was like to do it. And I say these things because I've realized, I've come out of it, and I've realized that you have to fight. And some of us are using their fists, but we have to use our minds. Yeah. And we have to understand that, we have to go back and understand that they didn't want us to read and write. They did not want us to read and write. And there's a disconnect with our youth understanding that. That's how they co controlled us. So if we understand that, that you use the, the education to empower yourself to be able to live the life that you want to live, to be able to do the things that you want to do, to be able to be put in positions of power so you could change the communities you actually live in. And I truly feel that my, from, my, from my younger brother that's in kindergarten right now that says that I want to be in university just like you, that's powerful. That's that powerful. That means something. And I say that because he already has in his mind that he's going to hold himself up to a higher standard than what our community holds ourselves down to. So when there's police put in our schools that we have in Toronto, where there are police presence in our schools, that already automatically label you as a troublemaker, that already label you as a criminal, we're not even able to walk in our communities. When I come out of my door, there's a camera right there in front of my house. This is what I'm living in. I'm already told that you're a criminal. This is what we're growing up in. So let's get serious about what's actually happening. I'm taking psychology. If you see that as your alternative and that's what you're gonna be, usually you follow that path in some capacity. I stay in that mindset because it's important for us to understand where our youth are coming from, the lives that we're actually living. The times have changed. The times have changed, the times have changed, and it's important for us to change with them. But it's important for us to understand and teach the youth that education is not about just getting a job. It's not about getting a good job so you could just make money. It's about empowering yourself and having tools to be able to achieve the things that you want to actually achieve. In, in university, we, my first year, there was no support at all for black students. And even with the Black Students Association, I didn't feel that that was my place in any capacity. But I found one place, this place called Tri-Mentoring. And they had a first generation program where they actually had mentors that looked like me, that worked with the students. And they broke the stereotypes of what it is like to be in university. And I felt comfortable to be able to bring my community to university. Because this was a privileged environment that said that, you, you know what, you can't bring all of that here. When I brought my friends to the university, security came to us and said, why are you guys doing here? Can I see ID? So there's a place where we're already labeled that we're not supposed to be here. And for me, I look at myself as a leader and I, I, I define a leader as not somebody that achieves success on their own, but somebody that achieves success with their peers and helps their peers to achieve that success as well. So that's why I have Fitz, I have Femi, stand up please. Zamara, Holly, Sabi, Sabi, stand up please. I have these individuals right here. Because of course, we come, we come from these communities that already 
they tell us that we're not going to be anything. We already come from these communities that already deem us as being problem makers. We come from these communities that don't want nothing to do with us. So we have to create our own community, and that's what these gangs are. That's what, when we represent our hood, we represent our hood to the fullest. We do that because of the fact that we, we need something to hold down to. And when I'm in university, I hang on to that because I'm a minority. I'm a minority. I've gotten more A's in university than I've gotten in high school. I've got professors writing me letters of recommendation for grad school. And I'm in third year. It's important for us to be able to understand that we have to be in those spaces to be able to get those opportunities. It's important for us to find our identity we're not going to find our identity before we're 18. We, we're growing and transforming. We're meeting people of all walks of life that influence, influence us in many different ways. And I truly feel that we have to start talking to our youth to understand what they're going through so that we can actually create something that will work for them to be able to achieve the things that they actually want to achieve in their life. Thank you. sat at your table. Okay, I could feel the energy. So congratulations, and I admire people like yourself for getting into the midst of people who are not like you and making that change. I have a couple suggestions and I have a recommendation. Um, we talk about uh, how do we, and I want to speak specifically to what the topic of this session is, sustainable outcomes and making education work for African Canadians. And I recognize over the couple of days that I've been here that my experiences on the West Coast are quite different than the experiences on the East Coast. So I am speaking from a West Coast perspective. Um, one of the things that, my name is Patricia Whitaker, by the way, and for those of you who don't know me, I ran for school board in Richmond, BC. As I mentioned before, it was 56% Chinese, and I was elected. So, my first recommendation, run for political office on your local school boards. You have to infiltrate the system in order to change the system. Second thing, parent participation and relationship with teachers. I know that parents have to work. Um, try to get in there. You can make individual meetings with your teachers to find out what's happening in your children's lives. Um, pushing traditions and holidays, Black History Month, when I sat on the school board, they were only celebrating Chinese New Year. I said, stop there, there's Black History Month. Recognizing the power of parent involvement. The, the provincial government will listen to parents more so than they will listen to school trustees. That's a fact, they have said that. So if you, um, that takes me right into the next one, mentoring. Mentoring and supporting those parents who don't understand the yeah. system, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. Translating the language for them because I come from a community where they're refugees, French-speaking people, they don't know, help them, those of us who know, help them to know. And also making teaching positions and other vacancies in the education system available to people in our community. When I was on the school board, they wanted to advertise in Global Mail. I said, well, how do you think? People in my community may not necessarily read the Global Mail, so I want you to advertise in local media. Mm -hmm. 